Hey guys, Coach Chris here, back with another video. Got a cool one today for you, I think, anyway. At least it was cool for me. Um, I reached my new all-time high blitz rating today. So, new peak for me. Happened today. I'm going to show you the game. And, of course, it is in a French defense. Um, so, before we even get into the game, I feel like hitting a new peak again, just sort of validates what I'm doing and tells me that I'm on the right track. And, I mean, literally all I'm doing is Lee Chess Puzzle Streak and or Chess.com Puzzle Rush and playing games. I'm trying to be consistent with my openings. I've managed for the most part with the black pieces. I've jumped around more than I would like with the white pieces, but I feel like I'm settling into a more consistent repertoire. Hopefully I stick with it with the white pieces. But just simple tactics, really working on pattern recognition, eliminating blunders, playing solid openings again and again, and looking at those games is the recipe that I've used to get to my new peak rating. So let's check out the game. So e4, e6, we get a French defense, and we get a new variation in the series. Um, I will have to look up what this variation is called, and I'll put it in the title of the video. Uh, by the way, I at the time I'm 2107, opponent is 1958. So we get a new variation of the French. Again, I'll, I'll look up the name and supply it. But white um, really tries to clamp down on the d5 square, but we're playing the French. We're going to go d5 99% of the time, and this is no exception. So d5 anyway. After takes, 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 what white is hoping for is that we take with a queen, and then white can develop the knight with a free tempo. We're not playing the Scandinavian, although I do love the Scandinavian. We're playing the French, so knight f6, we're looking to recoup this pawn with no drama. Knight c3, but now we can just take. The knight is protected by the queen. Bishop c4, developing with tempo. Knight b6, retreating with tempo. Now, we should already mention that white has an isolated pawn, and as we've discussed several times now, the recipe for winning against an isolated pawn is you blockade, you trade down, you win the endgame. So white does not want to trade. White plays bishop b3. I play knight c6, clamping down on d4. White plays knight f3, and here... I toss in an extremely annoying move for white to face, and that is queen to e7. Again, we want trades. We're hoping for queen e2, which is actually white's best move. If white tries to block the check with, say, knight e2, then bishop g4 is extremely unpleasant. The engine already says this is minus 1.5 for black. We're threatening to wreck the pawn structure, and white is really, really uncoordinated here. So that's no good, and so, surprisingly, best is to go into a very unpleasant queenless middle game or end game, whatever you want to call it. So we get the trade in, which we love, that's what we wanted to see. Bishop g4 anyway, still threatening to wreck the structure. Knight g5, now white has two attackers on f7. I deal with that first by taking on e2. If white were to play, say, bishop takes f7 check, then after king e7, nice and easy, if white were to take my bishop on e2, then after h6, the knight's hanging, the bishop's hanging, knight can't move away without dropping the bishop, if the bishop moves away, then we take the knight, so all good there. Um, and if white retreats, then I can retreat, and we traded a knight for a pawn, which is a great trade for us. So king takes e2, e knight d4 check, king moves away, and now taking the bishop. So now there's no longer two attackers on f7, and white's pawn structure is just awful. Three pawn islands, one, two, three, against two for me, pristine pawn structure, no weaknesses whatsoever. Development is sort of even. We each have one piece out, but it's my move. So h6, kicking the knight away. White tosses in rookie one check, doesn't really do anything. 
and you need to develop anyway. Bishop e7 is fine, blocking the check. Now the knight moves away, and now knight d5, occupying the dream blockading square, also lending some support to the bishop. It's a perfect square for the knight. Rook e5 to attack the knight, but just knight c6, keeping it very solid. d3, preparing the development of the bishop somewhere, although where is kind of an interesting question. I control this square, this square, and my knight influences this square, so the bishop doesn't have a ton of great prospects at the moment. f6. Um, I can't quite castle or move my king away. I can't move my king away from this bishop yet, because if I were to do that, then white would take on d5, and after the recapture, white could take my hanging bishop. Uh, winning two pieces for a rook, which would be a good trade for white. And so f6, preparing to get the king out this way. Knight d4, I thought the intention was to come into f5, pressuring this bishop on e7. I played king f7, and if knight f5, maybe rook e8, something like that. I uh, could also probably, actually if, if knight f5, then probably bishop b4 is already good to go there. I haven't looked at that yet, but let's let's just see what the mighty engine says. Yeah, bishop b4 works. Um, this is exactly the tactic we get in the game, but instead of knight e5, my opponent played knight e6. And so I should mention that um, up to move 10, I was still in book. This was my prep. Um, knight g5 is a new move for me. I handled it well according to the engine. So first 10 moves didn't have to think too much. I had already prepared that. But then from there, it's just following the recipe I follow in almost every French game. It seems like you just blockade the isolated pawn and you, you trade down into a favorable end game. Um, so having done nothing special, my opponent blunders on move 20. And again, it just shows that at our mere mortal level, 1958, it's so hard to go 20 moves without blundering. And if you know that, and if you just play solid chess, and you have been working on your Lee Chess Puzzle Streak to develop your pattern recognition, then it's not terribly difficult to play Bishop B4. You're hitting both rooks there. Um, white blocked, and I took the rook that was available to me, bishop recaptures, and now just rook e8. Um, we're hitting the knight twice. There's no fork because of the, not that way, the knight covering c7. So white needs to do something here. If the knight retreats, then we just follow our winning recipe against isolated pawns, but especially true when up material, and we just trade down. We can trade, bring the other rook over, and uh, just dominate with our extra exchange. Opponent, I guess, didn't, didn't register that the knight was attacked twice and played f4, which is kind of funny that in this position, only, only down an exchange, you know, but pawns are equal. White has an unopposed dark squared bishop, um, so just down an exchange, you wouldn't think that it would be negative 5.1 necessarily, but that's how bad the position is for white. But what's funny about this is that after f4, the engine doesn't even call this an inaccuracy, a mistake, a blunder. The game is just so far gone that f4, just dropping the knight, yeah, whatever. The engine's like not even complaining about it, which is funny. Here my opponent realized that he dropped the knight and resigned. So another 99% accuracy game from the French. Um, I don't know. I've, I've really been enjoying the French. It's my temperament, style, my chess philosophy. And I think if you can just farm accuracy, playing simple, move, simple developing moves, um, you're going to win a lot of games. It's hard to go 20 moves without blundering. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's the game. Um, thanks for watching. Keep grinding those tactics. Um, 
I really do think a very simple formula is all you need to uh, really improve in chess, and I'm following it. New peak rating today. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Keep grinding those tactics.